Welcome to the next episode in the PISD GAF train. Our next stop is Google Classroom. Google Classroom manages your classes and helps you save time. It helps you communicate with your students. If you go to classroom.google.com, you're going to log into Google and then select I'm a teacher. Usually within 24 hours, the district admin will verify your account and you'll have access. When you're logged into Google Classroom, you want to start by creating a class. If you click the plus sign, it will give you the option of joining a class or creating a class. If you click Create Class, then give your class a name. You do not have to fill in the section part, and then click Create. Your class will open, and it will look something like this. You can change the theme, the header image, by looking at the right side where it says Select Theme, or you can upload your own photo. You'll see right here that there are some choices in the gallery for the different themes that are available. The Stream tab is where you will see everything that's going on in your class. The class code that you can have students use to join is on the left side. On the right side, you'll see the plus sign, which is where you will add content. The Students tab is where you will see a list of all the students that are in your class. In the Students tab, you'll see that you can invite students. If you click this, you'll have to enter all your students' names. And then when they log in for the first time, they'll say, do you want to join someone's class? And then instead of having to enter the code, it will already be there for them to accept. This is great, especially for younger students. Then you have another part where students can post and comment in the Students tab. So they can post to other students and they can comment on other students. Or you can set it to where students can only comment, which means you are the one that are posting and they're answering. Or you can change it to only the teacher can post or comment. The Actions button will allow you to remove students, email students. In Prosper ISD, only 9th through 12th graders have email. Or you can mute a student. If you have told them that they can post and or comment and something isn't appropriate, you can pick certain students that they cannot comment on or post on different things. The About tab tells about your class. And then you can also invite other teachers to be co-teachers. When you want to add content, you'll look for the plus sign on the bottom right when you're in the Stream tab. Your options include creating an announcement, an assignment, a question, or reusing a previous post. When you create an announcement, you have several different options. You can just type in text to share it with your class. You can also upload something from your computer. You can upload from your Google Drive. You can attach a YouTube video. You can insert a URL. You can also choose to put the same announcement in different classes. And then you can either select to post it immediately, or you can save it as a draft to finish or post later. When you create an assignment, you'll have to create a title, but the description is optional. And then you'll choose a due date. It also gives the option of not having a due date. And then again, just like the announcement, you can upload something from your computer. You can upload something from your drive. You can attach a YouTube video or insert a URL. You can also choose which classes that this assignment is for, and then you can assign it right away or save it as a draft. Questions are great formative assessment tools. You can put a question in there, and then you can attach files or YouTube videos or insert URLs. You don't have to have a due date, but you can have one. And this asks a question, and then students will submit their responses. And this is even something that you could do in class if everyone has a device. Or if you don't have devices for every student, you could give them time to do it from other places, including at home. After you create an assignment, this is what it will look like. And then if you have something attached to it, those documents will be attached underneath. You'll have to where you can add a comment to your class if you need to. You'll see how many students have turned it in and are done and how many are still working on it. And you also see three circles, which then you can choose to move that assignment to the very top. You can edit it or delete it. This is what an assignment would look like for students when they sign in. 
and they have the option to add a private comment, which only goes to you. So if they have a question about the assignment, they can send you a question and you'll see it. They can also add different things to the assignment. So you do not always have to attach a file. You could just give directions, and then they could add files from their Google Drive. They could add a URL or a file from their computer. They could also create a new doc, slide, sheet, or drawing to attach to the assignment. If you want to switch classes and look at the, your other classes, you'll see the three lines in the top left, which will then take you back to your home screen where you will see all the classes that you have created. When you delete an assignment, that doesn't mean the documents disappear. It takes the assignment out of the classroom. However, you, the students can still locate it inside their drive, and you can still see the assignments inside your drive. The first time a student joins Google Classroom, a Google Classroom folder is created in their drive. And every assignment that they do in Google Classroom is automatically saved in this folder. You should notice that when you create or join a classroom for the first time, you have this same folder. This was a quick introduction to Google Classroom.